So in part three, uh, we got to the stage where we had used iLogic to link some parameters uh, existing at the top level assembly to the parameters in each individual part. Uh, what we're going to do now is create a form which just makes it a lot nicer to read which parameters are going to be changing uh, without having to look through the entire parameter table. So we can add a form down here on the iLogic browser with a right click uh, or on the Manage tab of the ribbon, it's hidden under this down arrow here. So we give the form a name and it only applies to this document and now we're in the form editor. So I want you to look at this area here um, because this is actually the form we're about to create. It's just at the moment, there's there's nothing on it. Uh, but you'll see as we drag the parameters we want from here on the left to here, uh, they, start, they start to appear in the form. So we'll bring in our lengths and our thickness parameters, and we can choose what wording we want to use for the form's sake. Um, you might have named the parameters something pretty obscure that only means something to you. Uh, but here we can keep that parameter name in the background, but just show it as something more meaningful on the form. Uh, now we can take a look at the bottom half of the form editor. Um, and as you can see, we can do things like edit the appearance of the text. Uh, so let's just make it a, a little easier to read. And we can do the same for all the other lines of text. There's, there's some other appearance related settings you can do to change the forms here as well, by the way, um, like give it a classic Windows or an XP type look uh, if you felt the need. What can be tremendously helpful though is to add an image to your form um, and what I suggest here is to have first created a, a drawing of your assembly uh, with the dimensional values hidden and replaced with the, the same names you give to the, the form values. So if someone opens this and is unfamiliar with the model, um, it's pretty clear as to what can be changed. So now we're going to take a look at the settings for section one again. Uh, and notice you can change the input methods uh, from what's currently a simple text box where you just type in any value you want uh, to a slider bar where we can set a minimum and maximum value for the parameter um, and an incremental value for uh, how it can be changed. So we're going to do the same for all the sections. Um, and it basically just gives a little more control uh, so you know there won't be any crazy values getting entered and uh, blowing up the model. And with the thickness, well, we have a choice of three metal thicknesses here. Uh, so you can either display that as a pull down menu or as radio buttons like so. Now, once you're done, uh, the form editor disappears and you can see there's a button now to open the new form in the iLogic browser. And as you can see, we can easily change the dimensions of these parts uh, from the context of the top level assembly by just dragging on these sliders and choosing from a list of values. So give these methods a try. And if you have any questions, hit subscribe and drop us a comment.